Hey you guys, what's up? Bat Boy Bob here. Um, first ever deck tech video. This is one of my commander decks. It's one of my favorite commander decks, and I'm really excited to talk to you about it today. It's Marisi, Breaker of the Coil. Um, I remember when I saw this guy spoiled, I saw his artwork, and I was like, dude, I have to play this guy, because look, he's like a liger, and he's pissed. It's awesome. Alright, anyway, Naya colors. I love Naya. Red, white, green, some of my favorite colors of magic. Um, this deck is Cat Equipment Tribal. Um, granted, Marisi doesn't really have anything to do with Cat Tribal other than the fact that he's a cat. And he doesn't have anything to do with Equipment Tribal, so that's kind of strange, and you might think that's strange. But, um, his color identity, red, green, white, obviously I'm getting the best cats, I'm getting the best equipments with white red and I'm getting the best cats with green white so I thought he would be a perfect cat equipment tribal option and there's a bunch of cat equipment tribal cards in magic and they're all in this deck and yeah let's get into it so a bunch of my cards are in Japanese sorry about that I'll try to explain them for you if they are uh, so Marisi says your opponents can't cast spells during combat usually that doesn't come up or at least you don't really see it come up because your opponents can't cast spells during combat. So who knows if they want to do that or not because they can't. Um, so that ability isn't really that relevant, but it's an ability that says my opponents can't do something, and I love those abilities. The more important ability is the second ability, which says that whenever a creature I control deals combat damage to a player, I goad each creature that player controls. Um, and this deck isn't competitive, so I'm not playing it in a competitive setting. I'm usually playing it against other players who are playing other creature decks. And being able to have those huge creatures go after my opponents and vice versa, um, it's really nice being able to keep your opponents off of your back while at the same time having them fight against each other. So he's a political um, and just kind of annoying commander for a lot of players. Um, lots of players want to attack me because I'm attacking them, but goading them, that really throws a wrench in their plans. All right, so Marisi, Cat Equipment Tribal. Um, let's go over the mana base first. Uh, first off, I'd like to say that this deck is really focusing on mana ramp based on getting lands into play. Uh, so there's a lot of cards in here, things like Cultivate, Kodama's Reach. I'm just trying to adjust this quick. All right, Cultivate, Kodama's Reach, um, Traverse the Outlands. So lots of cards that search for basic lands. So having these basic lands to be able to search for is really important. Uh, so we have 13 planes. Uh, like I said, this is a cat equipment tribal deck. Um, both cats and equipments really care about white mana. Uh, so this deck has more planes than any other land um nice and then we have 11 forests one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven yep 11 forests so green is really important in this deck being able to play those ramp spells those things like cultivate um kodama's reach not only to be able to ramp but to be able to fix our colors because we are playing a three color deck um Red is by far the least important color in this deck. We're only playing three mountains, but, you know, having access to red is important. Being able to cast our commander and a few other equipment cards and instants and sorceries and whatnot. But it's easily the least important color. Um, yeah. Sacred Foundry, Temple Garden, and Stomping Grounds. I just had these Shocklands lying around. They're good. Um, these are searchable by a couple cards in here that search for planes, which is important. Um, other than that, yeah, I'd probably be playing more, um, dual lands, but like I said, with the amount of cards that search for a mass number of basic lands, we want as many basic lands as possible in this deck. Um, Command Tower, that's just bread and butter, you can't go wrong. Um, Path of Ancestry, uh, t -t -t so... I hope you guys know what this does. I'm not going to explain it. Um, but, yeah, it's good because we're playing Cat Tribal. Uh, taps for all three colors. Jungle Shrine. Uh, where do you think Marisi's from? He's from the jungle. He's got fun and games. He's got everything.
Thank you, Bob. But we know the name we got. All right. Um, Jungle Shrine. Shout out Guns N' Roses. Uh, this is probably my favorite artwork on any land. Uh, Wayne Reynolds, probably my favorite artist in Magic. I love this card. Uh, plus, with any commander deck that I'm playing that isn't competitive, flavor is pretty important for me, and, like, this is just perfect. Jungle Shrine. All right, Reliquary Tower. Uh, I usually don't like Reliquary Tower, but there's a lot of cards in here with, like, massive card draw effects, and we don't really have any way to uh, utilize our graveyard. Uh, so usually I think Reliquary is pretty bad in three-plus color decks, uh, just because it doesn't tap for any color. But when I draw 20 cards, I don't really want to discard 13 of them. Usually that's not a problem because, like, having 7 isn't that much different from having 20 because when are you going to be able to play all those cards? But um, in this deck specifically, I think this card is decent. Uh, I guess it's on the chopping block. This card, I, I, don't, I don't really like it that much. Usually I don't need more than 7 cards, you know? So I think this card's actually really overrated. But I'm still playing it. All right, um, Sigarda's Aid. This card is fantastic. So for one mana, it allows us to attach equipments when they come into the, when they come into play to creatures that we control. Um, also gives all of our equipments flash. Well, it doesn't give them flash, but we can cast them anytime we can cast something at instant speed. Uh, so being able to at the end of our last opponent's turn. Uh, flash our equipment in and attach it is just fantastic. This card is one of the best cards in the deck. Steel Shaper's Gift. It's a must if you're playing Equipment Tribal. Search your library for any, for any equipment. Swords to Plowshares. Um, so one of the most important equipments in this deck and one of the equipments that we usually search, search for with Steel Shaper's Gift is... What's it called? Um, Sun Forger, uh, which allows us to play red and white instants. Um, at instant speed by like de-equipping the Sunforger. Sunforger is a great card, we'll get to it. Uh, so a bunch of the cards in this deck are red and white instants, red or white instants with CMC4 or less that we're able to play off of our Sunforger. So we're playing as many of those as we possibly can. Kind of. All right, well, anyway, this is just good on its own. This card is awesome. This is basically Swords to Plowshares or Path to Exile um, with... A downside so usually this is just tap a creature for one white mana but if we have metal craft which means we have three we control three or more artifacts we get to exile target creature and they don't gain life and they don't get to search for a land so this is just a better source of plowshares or path to exile if we have three or more artifacts which we probably will because we have a bunch of equipments um i don't know what this is called in english uh two red destroy target artifact one white destroy target enchantment once again Another Sunforger target. It's great. Um, being able to get rid of those problem permanence instant speed. It's awesome. This card is just too cool to not put in the deck. Granted, I don't think it's very strong. I don't think it's very good. But when I'm playing Equipment Tribal and I'm in red, you better believe I'm playing this card. Like, attach target equipment to target creature. There's a bunch of huge equipments in here that have huge equipment costs. And if we don't have something like Sigarda's Aid or Pure Stealth Paladin, which we'll get to. This card allows us to attach for free, which is pretty sweet. Plus, we can steal our opponent's equipments. But we don't actually steal it. We just, like, attach it to our creature. They still control it, so just be careful about that. All right, Soul Ring. Classic. You know what it does. All right. Skull Clamp. If you don't know what this does, look up Skull Clamp. It's awesome. If you're playing 1-1s, if you're playing Equipment Tribal, this is one of the best cards in your deck. Draws you a bunch of cards. It's fantastic. Ah, uh, boy, I don't know what this card is called in English, but one mana comes out, becomes a copy of any other equipment in play. Fantastic. This is a great card. One mana, plus ten, plus ten. Loses flying, but who cares? It doesn't have flying to begin with. Oh my god, if you have something that equips for free, one mana, plus ten, plus ten. Forever. That's absurd. It's so good. Speaking of being able to equip for three, if you have Metalcraft, Pure Steel Paladin allows your equip costs to equip for zero. And whenever an equipment ETB is under your control, you get to draw a card. This is one of the best equipment cards in the game. Fantastic. SRAM, whenever you cast an equipment, draw a card. Fantastic. Lean and Shikari allows you to equip at instant speed. Fantastic. And it's a cat. Meets both of our tribal requirements. Must. Um, Oresco's Explorer. 
Uh, this, when it ETBs, allows us to search for planes, not only basic planes, but uh, we can search for sacred foundry or temple garden. So this is good fixing. Um, it doesn't put it into play, it just adds it to your hand, but it's a cat and it fixes us and it draws us cards. It's good. If you're playing white and you're not playing this card, uh, either you don't have the card or you're just not, you're just not playing the game the way you should. Uh, sorry if I sound a bit pretentious, but this is my favorite white card in Commander. Probably. Um, if not that, it's my favorite Ikoria card. I love this card. It's amazing. This thing gives our opponents 1-1 one, one Death Touch Rats, but our cats have uh, protection from rats. Um, I don't know what it's called in English. It's from the Cat Tribal Commander set. So if you're building a Cat Tribal deck, this card's great. It's also good with Marisi. Giving our opponents creatures is a really cool thing we can do because we can goad them and get them to attack our opponents, which is really cool. Um, rampant Growth, you know what it is. You know what it is. Everything I do, I do it big. Yeah, I scream. Okay, um, Boros Charm, another great target for uh, Sunforger being able to give all our permanents indestructible is really huge when we're playing a deck that has a bunch of permanents uh, Swiftfoot Boots you know what it is oh my god Blade of Selves this is either one of the best equipments in our deck or one of the worst it's really board dependent uh, this card is really bad with legendary creatures but it's really good with ETB effects um, and it's really good with like Lords Let's say I have this guy out and I equip it to this. This gives my other cats plus two, plus one. If I swing with this, it's making three copies of this. So I have four of this card that gives all of my cats plus two, plus one. It's ridiculous. Blade of Selves. All right. Dowsing Dagger. This card's good at the beginning of the game. It transforms into a land that taps for three of any one color. Really good ramp. Um, it's not good at the end of the game, but giving our opponents creatures is a nice political way to say, hey, I gave you a present, don't come after me. Um, and I really like those sorts of, those, yeah, I can't talk, those sorts of politic cards with Marisi, because he's really a political commander. Dowsing Dagger, okay. Sword of the Animist is great, allows us to ramp every single turn by searching for a basic land whenever the equipped creature attacks. Fantastic. All right, that's it for the two drops. Uh, King of the Pride, plus two, plus one to all other cats we control. It's just good. Uh, Kemba Ka Regent. Yeah, so if our Marisi plan doesn't work, um, anyway, if we attach a bunch of equipment to Kemba Ka Regent, she poops out a bunch of two, two cats. Pretty amazing. She can end up pooping out quite a bit of them. Uh, she poops a lot. She's a... She needs a big litter box, is what I'm trying to say. All right, uh, Brimaz, King of Oreskos, making those 1-1 one -one tokens that allow us to draw a bunch of cards off a Skull Clamp. Um, Cat Tribal, he's one of the best. Even Mind Sensor, once again, if you're playing white, please play this card. It's fantastic. It's awesome. Everyone says white is super weak, but man, white has the best hate bears, and I love hate bears, and this is one of the best. Uh, Generous Gift is so good in this deck, being able to give our opponents fodder for our goad triggers, so making them a 3-3 elephant that we can turn against one of our other opponents while destroying their best permanent is awesome. Generous Gift. Wow, I'm starting to sense like an African theme with this deck. We got elephants, rhinoceroses, fucking birds. It's Africa. Anyway. Um, like I said earlier, theming is important, so we're really going for this, like, animal, like, theming, this, like, jungle theming. Um, Chaos Warp, you know what it is, it's awesome, gets rid of their worst permanent, um, and maybe they might even flip into a creature that we can goad, huh? 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 Seems pretty good. That's Magical Christmas Land, but you know me, I love Magical Christmas Land. Kodama's Reach, you know what it is, it's great. Cultivate, same exact thing as the last card. Awesome. Shaman of the Forgotten Ways, I think is what this is called. This allows us to cast Marisi quite easily um, on turn four. Um, also, his ability is a biorhythm on a stick, and we're always going to meet this ferocious um, requirement. If you don't know him and you're playing big creatures, look him up. Shaman of the Forgotten Ways, one of my favorite cards. 
uh, Beastmaster's Ascension. Look at all those tigers on the art. Like, how could I not play this card? Um, Ashnod's Altar. Uh, Sack Outlet's are really important in any sort of creature st strategy. And this one's especially good because this is a really mana-hungry deck uh, with all, all our equipment costs. So Ashnod's Altar is just great. Uh, I don't know what this is called in English, but it gives us an extra turn and makes all of our creatures indestructible. Uh, but if we don't win during that extra turn, we lose. This is one of the best targets for Sunforger when we're about to win, but we can't really get over the hump. And then we play this and just, yeah, it gets there. Uh, Aura Shards, fantastic if you're playing creatures and if you're in green-white. You probably know that. Miri Weatherlight Duelist is one of the best cats in Magic. Uh, just making combat really hard for up, for our opponents. Nice Charm, another great Sunforger target. Um, being able to tap all of our opponent's creatures, uh, giving us that huge swing. Also returning a creature from our graveyard to our hand is really nice. Sunforger, we already talked about this a bunch, um, but if we have something like Pierce to your Paladin that allows us to equip for free, paying a red and a white to cast any instant, any red or white instant from our deck, Basically, because I'm not playing any red or white instants that are more than four mana. So, yeah, this card is fantastic. All right, this equipment gives plus two, plus two, and hexproof if the equipped creature is legendary. Seems like a pretty good target for our boy, uh, making him a seven six hexproof. That's just amazing. So, if our commander has seven power, if we hit one of our opponents three times, they're dead. Plus, just imagine Marisi wearing this in the battle, it's just fantastic. Um, Sword of Feast and Famine is the most expensive card in the deck and probably one of the best cards in the deck. Uh, we're ramping our lands really hard, so being able to untap all lands is huge. Um, Baron, absolutely amazing. Cat Equipment Tribal. If you don't know Baron, look him up. He's great. Uh, two mana. I can attach all equipment I control to him, and then he gets double strike, so he's just a great Voltron backup plan uh one thing in like my casual commander decks but even my competitive ones like our commander's four mana we don't want to be playing too many cards that are four mana so all of these four mana cards that i have in here i think i have five of them usually you know i'm i'm gonna play him if i have four mana um but these cards are so good that they have to be a part of the deck so things like Baron, Lean and War Leader, which makes us more cats. Um, it, it's great. These things can be skull clamped, and then I draw a bunch of cards. It's amazing. Smothering Tithe. If you're playing white, play this card, especially if you're playing three or more colors. These treasure tokens are invaluable, especially if you're playing a mana-hungry deck that needs a bunch of colors. Smothering Tithe is great. Greater Good. Um, this deck has huge power creatures, so our equipments are buffing them, making them like 20 power creatures. Sacrificing them and drawing 20 cards, it's one of the best feelings in the world. Um, obviously, you're not going to just do that, but you know, having this in play deters our opponents from targeting our giant creatures because we can just sacrifice them and get all the value that we would have had if they would have stayed on the field. Great, good, amazing. This art, much better than the Battle Bomb art. Much better than the, I think it's like 10th edition art. Card's awesome. Hammer of Nazan. Absolutely fantastic. Um, very similar ability to Sigarda's Aid, meaning that when an equipment ETB is under our control, we get to attach it to a creature for free. Plus, the equipped creature gets indestructible. Um, invaluable Voltron piece. Uh, giving that huge creature we have indestructible is absolutely huge. All right, Helm of the Host, Goto. Okay, I'm playing a red Equipment Tribal deck. Why wouldn't I play Helm of the Host and Goto? If you don't know the combo, look up Helm of the Host, Goto. It's one of the sickest combos in Commander. It's a one-card combo. If I play Goto, I get to search for this. Infinite combat, infinite attacks, infinite Godos. It's broken. I'm not going to explain it here. Um, Nahiri, the Lithomancer, it's like an equipment planeswalker, it's great. Uh, Stone Hero Giant is crazy. Um, I hope this is still recording. Just give me a sec. Still recording? Good, 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 good. Alright, thank goodness. 
Stone Hewer Giant is amazing. Two mana tap, search our library for an equipment, put it into play and attach it to a creature. Uh, very good, especially with the next card. The next card, Samu. So being able to untap him with Samu is just amazing because we can search for two equipments every single time. Samu is probably the best Naya commander. Samu is absolutely insane. Giving haste to all of our creatures. Flash, she can come in and like eat something that's important. She's just crazy. Um, I especially like her as part of the 99 because if she's in her hand, that allows us to play her Flash and it allows us to like eat one of our opponent's creatures. If she's our commander, our opponents can see that and they're not going to attack us because they know we have Sam Samut available to us. But if she's in our hand and a part of our 99, she can have that element of surprise. She's awesome. Probably one of my favorite cards. I used to have a Samu deck. It was nuts. It was like Naya humans. So good. Uh, this is Aura Shards, but with cats. Um, and it's a cat itself. So whenever a cat ETBs, we get to destroy target enchantment or artifact. It's amazing with our cat-like um, token generators. Things like uh, Kemba Call Regent and... Um, oh, what's it called? Yeah, Lean and War Leader. Absolutely amazing. Um, oh, this guy's great. Um, he allows us to draw up to three cards per turn. It's kind of like a, um, it's like an Edric effect. Uh, but we don't draw for each creature that deals damage, just for each opponent that was dealt damage. So we can only draw up to three, but it's a cat. It draws his cards. It's great. Um, Hunter's Prowess, I think, is one of the most underrated cards. Uh, this gives plus three, plus three, and trample, and you draw cards equal in number, equal to the amount of damage dealt by the creature or whenever the creature deals damage this turn draw that number of cards yeah so putting this on a giant creature giving it trample drawing a bunch of cards this card is absolutely amazing if you're playing voldron if you're playing a deck with beefy creatures that are trying to attack amazing uh this card gives plus two Sorry, my mistake. Gives plus three, plus three to all creatures we control that aren't humans. This deck is playing a very small amount of humans. I think Samut and Godo are maybe two of the three humans in the stack. Maybe there's a few more. Oh yeah, there's Dranith Magistrate. Anyways, um, so this buffs our whole team. Or we get to draw cards equal to greatest power among non-human creatures we control. Which is usually going to be like five. So play Marisi, turn four, turn five, draw five cards at instant speed at like the end of our opponent's turn. It's freaking amazing. Uh, I think this is called like Song of the Wild Speaker or something. Not sure. Um, Soul's Majesty, look at that artwork. Jasper Acing, amazing. How could I not play this in a cat tribal deck with huge power? So draw cards equal to greatest power among creatures you control. Fantastic. Um, Luca. Luca, 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 making waves in standard, but I thought why not throw him into a commander deck? I mean, look at that saber tooth cat he's got as a friend. Like, plus I pulled this from a pack and I just kind of wanted to put it into a deck. Um, but using the minus two to get rid of one of our tokens and flipping into one of our like giant cats, something like Arabo, seems pretty good. So I think, you know, this deck is pretty creature heavy. So yeah, why not? Luca, seems good. Um, Arabo, absolutely huge and makes one of our cats absolutely huge. And as you've seen here, power, 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 power matters in this deck. So being able to like bump our creatures like times two and then having a greater good on the field or something like a hunter's prowess, it's just gross. I get to draw like half my deck. Seriously, I've drawn 50 cards off of like one trigger in this deck. It's ridiculous. Rari's Wake, if you're playing green-white, this card is just fantastic. Doubling the amount of lands, doubling the amount of mana that your lands produce, great. If you're playing big creatures and you're playing a green deck, and if you're just playing big stuff in green, Selvala Stampede is probably one of your best options. I love this card. It's in almost every single one of my green decks. Um, if you've played with me, you know how much I love this. Play this card. It's awesome. Selvala Stampede. 
Rish card's expertise, just going along with that power theme. Uh, so being able to draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures we control, and then being able to cast a spell with CMC 5 or less, it's just fantastic. Goto, the combo, the man, he's insane with uh, Helm of the Host, just ridiculous. Embercleave, just a great equipment. Um, double Strike Trample. Those are abilities that aren't really on our other cards. So being able to give both of those abilities, which are huge, it's really important. Um, Nizan, ETBs, he searches for the hammer, which is one of the most important cards in the deck. Being able for, sorry, being able to allow our equipments to equip for free when they come out, it's fantastic. Oh man, a gem to Marmor. If you've played Equipment Tribal, you know all about this card. Plus six, plus six, and whenever the equipped creature attacks, destroy target permanent. Woo! It's it's a spicy one. Uh, I think this is called Boundless Realms. Uh, searches for a bunch of basic lands uh, equal to the number of lands you control. It's great. Um, and then last but not least, this creates two two white tokens equal to x so it just creates a bunch of cat tokens and then i think it's called white sun zenith um but yeah create a bunch of cat tokens all right so that's my cat equipment marisi breaker of the coil deck uh just one note as i was doing this i realized i took out traverse the outlands from this deck that card is absolutely amazing and it was in this deck i don't know why it's out of here maybe i put it in a different deck that i have but traverse the outlands is fantastic one of the best cards in this deck i'm gonna put it in now all right thank you very much for watching my video um if you have any questions any comments if you guys think that i'm building this deck completely wrong let me know let me know any ideas or thoughts you have about marisi breaker the coil all right, see you next time. Peace.